Hey, Redeeming Grace Church family and friends, Pastor Josh here with the weekly update for Wednesday, March 15th of 2023. First of all, I just want to thank you for your favorable response and reception of the video and email that we sent out last Saturday. I know that's kind of jarring when we send something out like that, um, but I appreciate the heart and the response that you have given to us. Um, I know uh, to this point, there's no live dangers that we're aware of, so I don't want to give the wrong impression there, but we did sense that there are some vulnerabilities among us and that maybe we are um, um, not being as careful as we ought to be. And so we just want to send that reminder out. I know that some of those things, even the things that I shared, the basic things I shared, uh, create some challenges. And I just want to lay that in front of us as a challenge for all of us to help. And uh, even if you don't serve in kids ministry, maybe there's a way that you could sort of help help us uh, in some in some smaller areas and uh, to help you know get kids safely up the elevator and into rooms help watching the doors greeters that kind of stuff there's this is really a whole church thing not a children's ministry thing and so that was the intent of it and I appreciate that you caught the heart of that and that everyone in our church wants us to be as safe and secure and give zero opportunity for anyone to be injured, hurt, wounded, taken advantage of in our congregation. So if you have concerns or thoughts, ideas, bring those to the elders. We as the elders want to take seriously the responsibility that we have to guard the flock. And we need your help in that. And we want to lead the way in that. And we want to set the tone for that. And uh, we want to hold people accountable to that. And so uh, just please hear our heart in that. And um, and we appreciate your um, your receptiveness to that so far. And pray for us as we seek to strengthen and, uh, and, and get even more training in terms of how, how to do that well. Um, a few things I want to let you know about. First, uh, ladies, there's an event this Saturday morning called If Table. Uh, ladies are going to be gathering at Krista Updike's home. I think there's already eight to ten women signed up, but if you want to be a part of that event, uh, please sign up so that they can make the appropriate preparations and you can get the, uh, the time and place um, and, uh, and it'll be a great time for ladies, so we encourage you to do that, do that roughly once a month and uh, would encourage women in our church to, to do that. On April 1st, we have a neighborhood breakfast. This is an outreach that we do in our community. Uh, we serve breakfast to anyone that will come. That's from 8 a.m. to 11. And it would be really great if we had a lot of people there to help make the tasks easier. And the goal is not just to get pancakes in front of hungry people, but to have an opportunity around the tables to have conversations. And the more people we can have there from the church, then the more conversations we can have. And the more of an experience of church that the people get. So that if they're invited, oh, it feels I see some faces I recognize. So, uh, so just being present and there, bringing your family, your kids can be a part of this thing, um, really does help make that event more effective and more attractive uh, to people coming into the life of our church. So consider, even if it's just for an hour, bringing your family by, getting some breakfast, and, uh, and helping in some way, uh, just build a good community, um, have some good conversations, wiping down a table, um, flipping a pancake, um, any sort of help is really, really um, appreciated. Also, uh, consider signing up for Secret Church. Uh, that's a simulcast. It's going to be going through the book of Jonah, as well as looking at persecuted Christians around the world and praying. Um, and so this is a great event. You can check it out on our website and uh, would love to have the ministry center full of people that are gathering to study God's word and pray on that evening. Also that same weekend, Jamie Love is going to be taking some people who are interested from our church uh, to a training in New Underwood. There's a church in New Underwood that's going to be doing an active intruder uh, training. Uh, so how? So the idea is that we have people trained in churches that if someone comes in who is a physical threat, we have a plan for how to engage them and to, to move that threat, to neutralize that threat um, in, uh, in an effective way. So if you have a heart for that, this kind of goes along with our children's stuff, but there's another angle on, on that. If you have concerns about that, you would like to be trained, you'd love to be part of a team that, uh, that helps keep the physical space of our church um, uh, safe, and uh, then uh, we would love to have you be a part of that. It's, it's fairly expensive to go, so we would, we would be happy as a church to pay for that if, that's, if you're interested in going and being a part of that training. If you'll give the time, we'll pay for it, and then we would love to have at least a handful of people trained on how to identify and, um, and mitigate, neutralize uh, potential physical threats. Uh, to our gatherings on Sunday morning. So, and then lastly, Student Life Camp is going to be June 18th to the 23rd. And it, so, if you've got a sixth through uh, 12th grader uh, this fall, or even a graduate, actually someone who's graduating this year could go. Uh, we would love to. Bree and I would love to take them to Estes Park as part of this camp. 
uh, we would love to um, have a more robust ministry to, uh, to students. And one of the things about camp is that you get more hours with a student at camp than you do a year's worth of Wednesday night youth groups. Uh, so it really would be a great way to sort of like um, have this sort of intense experience together of going to camp together that might springboard us into a more robust ministry to teenagers um, going, um, going forward in the life of our church. So would encourage you to, um, to consider signing up for that. And if you can put any sort of money down, that's good. The sooner you do that, the, the deadline to pay for those, I've already paid a deposit, but the deadline for the full payment of that is coming quickly. And, um, and I don't want to pay for spots that we don't need. And also, if you're able to put something down, even if it's not the full amount, that allows us to, to then go ahead and, uh, and get the right number of spots paid for so that we're not leaving anyone out that wants to go and we're not paying for people, paying for spots that could be used by others and really would end up being wasted. So sooner you can sign up for that. And if you can put anything down at all, that really is a help and kind of helps lock us in. Um, and we can begin to make our plans and make sure that we're not wasteful with any of our funds. Um, and two more things. One is we finished up the James series this last Sunday. I'm really excited about the response to that. It seemed like it hit home with a lot of you. Many of you came to me and just talked about seasons of wandering or ways that you're wandering right now and asking for help and for prayer. Thank you for that. And, uh, and many of you also shared about people that you're concerned because they are wandering. And, how, and I appreciate you sharing that with me. And, uh, and, and if, if it touched you in that way, if it kind of reached your heart, then consider sending that message to somebody else. Um, um, I'm, I'm humbled when God uses uh, one of our sermons to do good spiritual work in people's lives. And if it did do good spiritual work in your life, consider passing that along. And if it did, begin to take action on that. Reach out to someone, engage in the membership process, uh, confess your sins to somebody, ask for prayer. Um, let your elders know. Um, don't let that moment slip you by that if you felt the Lord drawing you, wooing you back from some sense of wandering, let him use the rescuers that he is sending out his church to be a means of grace in your life. It brings us joy, it brings God's glory, and it helps you uh, move in the direction you need to go. Last thing is that we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper for the first time as a church on Sunday mornings. We've always just done that as part of our family meetings. And so now the elders have worked through um, theologically, biblically, historically what the Lord's Supper is and how we will be practicing at Redeeming Grace Church, who can and can't participate in that according to our convictions. And so look that over in anticipation for this coming Sunday. I will preach a sermon prior to that. So that will be our message this Sunday is the Lord's Supper. And one of the things that I'm going to really uh, emphasize is um, does it seem like the Lord's Supper uh, according to the scriptures, is it something that's about individual expression or is it part of an epic story? Like, is it really about us and what we think um, and our own self-expression of our faith? Or is it is it engaging in a larger story, an epic story that God is telling that really isn't about us at all? And so there are re requirements and um, prerequisites to engaging in this because it's not about us and it's about a story that God is telling. And so um, which one is that according to Jesus? Which one is that according to the apostles in the book of Acts? Um, which one is that according to Paul? Is it, is it a, a self-expression, uh, baptism, Lord's Supper, or self-expressions of my faith in Jesus alone? Uh, certainly that's part of it, but is it also something more? Do we make too little of it or do we make too much of it? And I'm going to argue that we typically, probably most American Christians, make too little of it. And so, uh, so I want to make that case to you. And then as we begin to celebrate that regularly on Sunday morning, we want to do that carefully. We want to do that honestly. We want to do that in a way that fits with historic Christianity and the Bible's intention. And so if you read through that and you see something, you go, oh, well, according to this, I wouldn't be able to participate. Um, I would encourage you to examine your own hearts in that way. Examine your own relationship with Jesus and with his church. And, uh, and come talk to us. Um, because maybe the Lord's at work in your heart, or maybe there's something that we're not seeing. We certainly want to be teachable as well, and we want to lead this really well. And so um, so I would just encourage you to begin preparing and praying for that and, and thinking about, um, is the Lord's Supper, is the church, is baptism, is all of those church ordinances and church practices, are they about individual self-expression, or are they telling a bigger story and I'm supposed to fit into a larger story that God is telling? And what does that, what implications does that then have for us actually taking it on Sunday mornings? And so um, would love for you just to be praying about that, reading those texts. 1 Corinthians 11 um, is a great passage to read. Even 1 Corinthians 10 speaks about the Lord's Supper a little bit too. And, um, and I'm looking forward to 
uh, the opportunity to, uh, to share that time with you on Sunday and to begin to um, move our church towards practicing that more regularly on Sunday morning. We want to do it well. We care about people's souls. We want to follow Jesus as clearly as we can. And, uh, and I pray that together uh, the Lord will continue to grow us in the ways that he wants as he's telling his big grand story of redemption of human beings and the whole world through Jesus Christ. So love you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Let me know how I can pray for you. I'll catch you next week. Bye.